Hey Falcons, it's Coach 2 again. Um, on today's episode of Distance Learning, we're going to be talking about mean absolute deviation, and then we'll also be talking about the different shapes of a graph and what they mean. All right, let's take a look at today's lesson. Um, we are going to work on chapter 8.1.3. You want to start off by watching this video. Don't forget you can pause anytime you feel like you need to so that you can follow along or that you need to work on the problem independently and then go back to watching the video and then going back to work on the problem by yourself. All right, let's go ahead and start with the intro. Chapter 8.1.3, how else can I describe the data? Shape and spread. To continue your investigation of how to describe and represent data, today you will analyze the shape and spread of the data as you work with your team or by yourself Ask yourself these questions. How can I compare data? What measures can help me compare data? Is there a better way to describe or represent the data? First problem is 8-30. Um, this one is basically a review problem. You need to do problems A through F for each game. So there's game one and game two. A lot of the questions are review, so you can go back and look at your notes or the previous lessons for help. So let's move on to 8-32. How can I measure spread? One way to measure the spread of data, how much variability there is in the data, is to calculate the range. However, Part D of Problem 830 shows that this measure may not provide a true sense of the spread. A better way to measure the spread of the data is to calculate the mean absolute deviation. Read the math notes in, the, in this lesson for an explanation of mean absolute deviation. So let's go, to, let's go look at the notes. And I'll give you a few seconds to read it by yourself, or you can pause the video to read by yourself. Okay, and then let's go on to our notes. So here is 8-32. You want to copy the chart right here into your math notebook. Make sure you're labeling all your problems like usual. Alright, so in part A... You want to follow each step carefully. It is a really good way to solve for the mean absolute deviation. I think CPIM did a good job explaining each step of the way. So make sure you be carefully. All right, so part one is to list the data. So you might have to go back and look at 830. Second step is to find the difference. And that's the column right here. So this is part or number two, or step two. And then this will be step three. So step two says you're gonna find the difference. So the first data was 12, and we're gonna find the difference, which means to subtract, and the mean was 10. Therefore, the answer is 2. And then step 3 says to find the absolute value of that. So you're going to take your answer from part 2 and find the absolute value of that, which is 2. And then the last part is, or step 4. So step 4 is down here on the very bottom. You want to calculate the sum. So you're going to add everything up. So again, you can pause right here and add everything all together. And then the very last step, step five, is the mean absolute deviation, or I like to abbreviate it as MAD because it is a very long process. So you're gonna take the sum, or whatever answer you got, and divide it by the number of data, which is 10. So go ahead, pause again, and go ahead and calculate the mean absolute deviation. All right, let's move on to problem 8-35. How can I describe the shape? Statisticians use the words below to describe the shape of the data distribution. Use your vocabulary skills. Wrong thing. Use your vocabulary skills, the glossary if needed, that's the dictionary, to match the terms with the histograms that follow, note that each histogram is described using two terms. So let's take a look at it. 
So I think there's one, two, three, four, five vocabulary words here. The first one is a double peak. So I like to think about two mountains. Ta-da! That's my mountain. Skewed. I mean, something is like pushed to one side. And then single peak is just one mountain. Symmetric means it's pretty even on both sides. I don't think I could draw a picture that for that. Or the word uniform. Uniform means it's even from top to, no, not top to bottom, left to right. So it's uniform from left to right. Or I like to think of kids at school that have to wear a uniform. Everybody looks the same. So if you look at letter B... We can definitely say it's a double peak because if you look at it, there's two peaks into the graph. So that one's double peaked. And then I would say it's symmetrical because if I split it down the middle, it's about the same on both the left and the right side of the graph. So go ahead, pause the video, and describe each of the graph. Don't forget that it is using two terms for each graph. Thank you for watching another episode of Distance Learning with Coach 2. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel somewhere on the bottom. Thank you.